Hey everybody, it's Tyler here at Vex Rules, checking in 1469A. It is what it is, and it is looking pretty good here so far for this team. Great performance throughout the season as well too. A singer Ben, a skills, another one getting the excellence, and then a California State's finalist as well too. So 1469A rocking this great season and looking really good here as we're filming them. Currently 4-0, so we can't wait really to see how they do in their division as well too. A lot of great stuff. Uh, if you saw this robot earlier, this is the first time they're actually running with like an active intake as well too. So we'll be talking about some of that journey as they made that uh, choice to swap out. But a lot of great things as well too that we'll be talking about on this robot uh, from the sensor side, cool cooling fan that we'll be mentioning as well too. So let's learn more about 1469A coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Lauren, I think something we really got to dive into with your team is the changes that you've made to your intake coming into Vex Rose. To talk to me about what you had before, why did you go that route, and why did you make the changes into what you have now? Okay, so I think a lot of teams, the first thing they noticed when they saw our robot reveal for Worlds is that we do actually have an intake now. And I still stand firm with the belief that you do not need an intake to perform well. All you need to have is ball control. So one of the things is that starting off early season with our MoaBot, we actually had two half-cut C-channels that came down and they had polycarb. This was really cool because we could drive into the goal, drive back, and then the ball would instantly be in it. And as the season progressed, we realized that this wasn't durable. Um, someone might have saw at Berkeley that our intake did actually get bent and it caused a lot of problems. So we ended up moving to box C channels on each side and it became more so of a metal, metal structure. Um, and it was still a corral throughout the rest of our season. We actually kept that corral heading up to states. But what we realized is that it was great because our balls would never get stolen. There was a nearly like 0% ch chance of our ball getting stolen. But what happened was in the alleyways, it was really hard for us to actually grab the balls while they were actively moving. So what happens is a lot of teams with intakes, I think something they don't realize is that when you are grabbing the ball, it doesn't look like it, but you are pushing it forward with you. And then when you come here, you can intake. So when you come here and you intake, the ball does go forward with you. And the problem was when we had a fully metal structure on the front of our robot, as we push the ball, it's not actually having anything to grab it and pull it back in. So that's kind of why we ended up going with an intake for Worlds. We wanted to be um, quick on the field. We wanted to be able to have good ball control for those balls that are lying out. Sometimes we do in match, something we do in match is that we focus on ball control and we prioritize the balls that are already on the field. So what you'll see here is it's a very basic intake. Um, we have the rubber band at the bottom to hold the ball up. We have this ramp made out of mesh and it's actually just zip tied in. It's not technically what other teams would call a real trap door, but it works very well. The mesh on the front gives really good flexibility. And then it's double chained, which we have our cool plate on the front, which actually protects the chain. Um, it's really good for the camera because sometimes it's hard to see who is who on those overview perspectives of the field. And then as you can see in the back, we're actually running a 5.5 watt motor. Um, this was a decision because we ended up giving that other 5.5 to our kicker. And as of now, we'd like to get higher on skills, but we are 10th. And I think that kind of sums up the intake. Um, it's also just top load. So this has been really, really convenient for us in match. We can pop it in and we can go. You and we'll be talking about top loads in a second. Something I do want to ask you first is, I love having the tri ball up this far, but as you mentioned, you're not really able to have like a full trap door from something like that then too. Is there any concerns like if you get hit too hard in the front that the tri ball might pop out or anything? Um, I think there is a little bit of chance of that happening. Um, sometimes if we have a bunch of balls in front, there is a possibility of it popping up like that. <laughs> um, overall though, I think because our kicker is up here and it's paired with our hang, the moment the tri ball goes up, it just slides back down. And this is another feature. We can actually match it from up here, slides down. Perfect. Let's talk more about that match loading strategy as well too, Odin, and uh, how you're approaching driving in a match as well too. Walk me through uh, kind of what a match looks like for you overall. Yeah, so um, I just adding on to like what Lauren said, we have top load, so Steven is our match loader. He's just able to pop that off to the top and we're just out taking that into the goal. So uh, this is like different from our states where since we had that just, I guess like an, a little arm for the tri ball, we actually had to just, if this is the bar here, we'd have to go forward into this bar, line up, place this and go down. But now we can just back up into this bar, see if we can just place this and we're just ready and good to go. And I guess another feature that we've just changed from you know, states and the rest of the season is our drive. 
So at States, we were running 2.75 inch wheels with 450 RPM. But now, as you can see, this is a 3.25 inch wheels on 450 RPM. So this is a massive change we made from States because we realized that if we wanted to drop tri balls off the side of a robot and I guess bowl them, we need to be faster so then teams aren't able to catch us. So uh, I guess, yeah, if you wanna. Yeah. yeah. So something I want to ask you, you played, as we're interviewing, you played four matches so far. Uh, any changes that you've seen in regards to your driving strategy throughout those four matches that you maybe will implement later on or during playoffs or anything like that? Um, I definitely think, so prioritizing bowling, I've definitely seen is greater than just doing one balls uh, all the time. So a lot of the teams have just been doing one balls. So if we just do one ball, then if we do one ball, it's just gonna be like basically net zero. So what we like to think of it as is if they do one ball and they come over the barrier, we're able to just outtake the one ball that we did and then bowl two, so then we're up two balls. So basically just waiting for them to go over the barrier so then we can get up on balls. Makes sense on that. Uh, Steven, let's pass it over to you. Lauren earlier was talking about uh, where you're at at skills right now and that skills is an important part of your team. So let's talk about your kata. Um, when we were talking earlier, you have a little bit extra weight as well too. So I'd love to hear that breakdown. Yeah, so for our team, skills is actually really important. Like we put a really big emphasis on it. So I could, you can see right here, we have a 60 tooth or it's kind of hidden, but with the slip gear connected to the 12 tooth. So it's overall just allowing us to place a tri ball on here. And another cool thing is that when this comes back, these stand-ons here actually makes an angle. So for pretty much the tri ball is able to rest here and able to angle in the way we want it to. And then another cool thing is we actually have this weight right here. So after a lot of testing, we figured out that by having this weight, the ball can just land in a better spot. And our cluster is like really important because we want to have time for Odin, the driver, to pretty much push those balls in. So the weight was really important. It, it was a lot of testing, making sure the tension is perfect, but We've used it for skills and then in matches, we know a lot of teams actually don't shoot in matches, but we like to think of it like as a wild card. Like if we need it, we can actually shoot and put the balls in a place we wanted to. So it's a very situational thing, but it's definitely a good thing to have for matches. Yeah, I agree. I mean, having versatility in a match, no matter what, even, even though the meta has evolved a lot, obviously, right, from what it used to be a few months ago and that sort of thing. Uh, I think still having that option, if you can afford the weight for it, why not, right? Because things do change. You never know the plus. Maybe the meta reverts back, right? And then what happens if you don't have uh, those things as well, too? So that's really cool. Uh, I got to ask you, uh, do you have any more skills matches left as we're recording this? Yes. Yeah, so, so, so what are you looking at making a change so you can try to irk up a little bit more in the rankings? Oh, uh, yeah. So we have two more tournaments and one more driver. So we want to make sure how like our angle on the bar is good. Also, the, the, the fields are elevated. so. It's a little bit of a struggle match though because we're used to doing it on the floor, but it's overall just making sure the spread is good, leaving enough time for Odin to push the balls in, and it's making sure that everything is running smoothly. We're getting the quick cluster that we want to have. Nadia, let's talk about some of the sensors on this robot as well too. Walk me through uh, what your team's using and uh, what are the results of those? Like, do you get any feedback on them? Tell me more about it. Yeah, so on this rover, we are actually using the internal motor encoder, which just allows us to measure how distance is going forward and reverse, along with the inertial sensor, allowing us to get accurate turns, especially, which is really important when we're going for skills, because every point matters. Something we find really cool that we use the inertial sensor for is collision detection. So for example, if our robot hits the macho bar, it knows to move on to the next activity due to decreasing the acceleration that's given there. And we just have some feedback that's given to us throughout the many testing that we've done throughout the year. And this just shows us what works, what doesn't, and what we need to change and what we don't need to change. Perfect. And throughout the year as well, too, any uh, big changes you made in regards to what sensors you have on your robot? Yeah, so actually previously when we had our CT or um, vertical hang, we had two limit switches that was placed on there. This pretty much stopped us from over rotating when we go for that elevation, just allowing us to stay on that bar and make sure we don't fall down at the end of the match. Makes sense on that. Speaking about hangs, let's pass it back over to Lauren, talk more about what your current hang is right now. And then after that, uh, it's something that I noticed right, when, right before we're gonna start the interview, you got this awesome cooling device as well too that okay. you designed. So I'd love to hear more about both of those. Yeah, of course. So one of the things is we started off the season with a C tier um, vertical hang. And this is something actually a lot of teams transitioned to for Worlds. Um, it's funny, for us, we actually did the opposite. We went from that C-tier vertical hang into a C-tier um, horizontal hang. And Odin, if you want to show that real quick. So what you'll see here is that we're actually running it on four cylinders. Um, they're the long ones and we actually um, have it pivoted from the back. So a lot of teams, what they'll do is they'll either have it going straight down or they'll have it straight from the back. But what ended up happening is we realized the cylinders we did choose were a little bit longer than we preferred. So it's actually tied in with pillow blocks at the top. And this means that the only thing holding it in is uh, two screws and then it's held in by these uh, collars over here and over here. And 
with the banding, we're actually placing the banding directly on the screws that are tied into the pillow blocks. This makes it so that it's very maneuverable. We don't have really any problems with it getting up and getting stuck. Uh, and then one of the reasons that I want to go into why we changed it to a horizontal hang is because we noticed a lot of people who had the winches were getting either pushed away from the bar in the last 10 seconds, they were nullified from hanging, or what would happen is they would try to go for that lineup and the lineup just ultimately took too long. So with this, we do actually have a balance bar attached if we need to, um, really, really need to go on that short barrier bar. But otherwise, this is really good because it allows us to bowl. We can get up to like five in the last 10 seconds and we can hang. We've been consistently hanging C tier within like three seconds. So it's a super fast, speedy hang if you want to bring that down, Odin. Um, and then I think the last thing is our banding. It's funny. We actually have little marks here with Sharpie, so we know where our banding has to go. It nice. has to be at just that right position. Um, we're running four rubber bands on each side and we actually have not changed them in like I would say a good week. They last a long time based on where the position is. Um, and then our air tank, what you'll be able to see really quickly is it's at the bottom. And then we have it tied in with some polycarb to keep it safe. Same with our wiring. Um, everything on this is, we try to get it as clean as possible, nice and <laughs> looking as nice as possible. Um, and then this is also, you'll see where the polycarb was cut out. It's because we have this cooling fan over here. Um, it's actually custom built. We use this at the end of each match. So if Odin or Steven want to take that robot and put it on, what ends up happening is your drive base motors get really hot. And this is really cool because we actually, I don't know if it's running, but inside here we have all of the temperatures. Um, they're actually listed by percent and color. It helps these guys because I'm colorblind <laughs> um, slightly, but it's very helpful because it lets us know how well our motors may run. Um, technically heat should not be affecting the motors um, performance, but it does. So ultimately we have that cooling fan custom built with some of the seat, um, angle, angled pieces, uh, some fans, I actually bought them off Amazon. And then um, paired with those temperatures, this is like some of the steps we take to ensure our robot is well running for comp. And so far it's been going great. No, this is awesome. Uh, by the way, I agree with you. Very aesthetically pleasing robot that you have uh, so far. Thank this you. fan system's great. So I, I love that you designed this and just took the initiative to do that. And obviously based on your motors. Anything else you want to cover on your robot at all? Oh, the anti-tip? Are you going to do it on the table? Sure, yeah, we have. Okay, so let's say let's say we get tipped, right? Oh, we're over. Anti-tip. Nice. <laughs> so where's that actually writing from? Like what's happening? Um, the kicker's just uh, going or what? The kicker's just going back and it goes straight back up. So, I mean, it was it wasn't intentional, but it works. And I think that's really cool. It's well, it cool is what it is, right? It so, is what it is. Don't worry about it. Absolutely. 14698. Uh, Congratulations on a great season. We can't wait to see how you do here at Bexworld. This is a great explanation and breakdown. So thank you so much for telling us more about your team, your robot, and good luck the rest of the way at Bexworld. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.